Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a technical program manager and information developer with the information experience team here at Juniper Networks. This learning byte is going to focus on route sharing using the instance import feature. So the instance import feature is one of a few options and features on Junos devices that you can use to share routes between routing instances or routing tables. Typically it's designed for use with virtual routers and in particular it doesn't work with uh, VRFs. Uh, for those setups you'll need to use a different feature called auto export. Now when we talk about import uh, in this case we're talking in relation to the routing instances. So if you think of a source routing instance sharing its routes or its, uh, its instance routes with a destination routing instance. Instance import is used on the destination side. It imports those source routing instance routes into the destination. Now, as the title shows here, this is per instance route sharing. So you're essentially getting all of the routes from each instance uh, when you do this kind of sharing mechanism. Now that may not always be what you want to happen. So there's a related feature called instance export and this feature uh, provides control or filtering capabilities for which routes are actually shared. Now again, uh, export here is in relation to the routing instances in question. And in this case, the routing, uh, the instance in the instance export statement is used on the source side for exporting routes out of that instance into a destination instance. So in terms of usage here, first of all, for instance import, that really is the primary functionality for, for this feature set here. You apply it, as you can see in the first diagram, on the destination side. And when you use it, you identify which source routing instance to import. And as we mentioned, it imports all the routes. So the control mechanism for that is the instance export statement. And as you can see in the bottom diagram, it's applied on the source instance. And you can use it to control or restrict which, shouts, uh, which routes are being shared to that destination instance. In terms of configuration, uh, you know, these features are based largely on routing policy. So there are two general steps here. The first is to define uh, the routing policy or policies. And then the second is to apply those policies as appropriate. So let's look a bit closer here. On the left side, that first policy statement called import policy. Now that's that primary functionality related to the instance import statement. As you can see here, we have a, a statement that looks like a from instance, and you can define the, the source instance you want to uh, import routes from, and you can accept that statement. And with that policy statement configured, you can see on the right-hand side where we apply it in with the, insta the instance import statement. You can see that it can be used both at the master uh, routing instance level and within particular routing instances as well. So that's the primary functionality, instance import. Now if we want to control or filter what's being shared across the routing instances, we can move back to the left side and look at the bottom policy statement, export policy. This is where we have that control or filtering mechanism, and this really is like a regular uh, routing policy. Inside the term there, you can see the from statement has uh, any condition really that you want to use. It could be from a particular protocol, from a route filter, anything that you would normally use for routing policy configuration. And similarly, the then statement, use the action as appropriate to accept or restrict the routes um, in, uh, per your situation. And then once you've got that done, and, and by the way, you can create more than one term, uh, however you see fit for your situation. And when you're done, you can apply that policy statement over again to the right hand side. And for the instance export statement, you can apply or reference that policy. So with that, let's get into the demo here. Uh, just to set things up for what we'll be working with, here's our Junos device. On the right side, you can see the master routing instance. On the left side, you can see two uh, routing instances we've configured. Each setup here has its own uh, interface, IP address assigned, and those uh, local and direct routes are fed into each routing table there. Uh, also, we've configured some static routes in the routing instances just to help show things as we go. Now what we're going to do is start by using an instance import statement in the master routing instance. And that's going to show how we can import the routes from each routing instance there on the left side into the master instance. Then we're going to tweak things a little bit and use an instance export statement 
in routing instance A to filter and allow only direct and local routes. We're going to do a similar thing with routing instance B, except in that case, we will only use the static routes or, or allow static routes. So with that said, let's uh, get onto the box and see what it looks like. For more information, there are some additional resources here. The first is a tech note called Understanding Instance Import. Gets into a bit more detail uh, for what we've seen here, and you can see the URL there to the PDF. There's also uh, regular technical documentation and coverage for instance import and instance export, and you can follow the URLs there. So that takes us to the end of this learning bite. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope it was useful to you, and we will uh, catch you on the next one. Bye for now. So let's start uh, by looking at a couple of things here on this device. First of all, let's look at those interfaces. You can see the GE interfaces uh, as per the diagram uh, assigned to each routing instance. Speaking of, let's look at those routing instances. There they are. You can see the interfaces applied as appropriate and there are those static routes that you saw. Let's also look at the routing options stanza. Uh, and there's in fact nothing here other than a, a default route that we don't need to worry about. So one other item let's do here is let's look at the routing table. So this is kind of our default position and everything's looking good. So in the main or master routing instance, we have the uh, interface route and the locally attached route. That's looking good. Similarly, in routing instance A, we have the equivalent, and we also have those two static routes, and then the same thing in routing instance B. So everything's looking good and well organized here. So um, what we're going to do to start is we're going to use the instance import statement to import uh, routing instance A and routing instance B into the master instance. So to help us with that, remember that this is uh, all about routing policy to make this happen. So I've configured a few uh, routing policies in advance. And so what we're going to particularly use to start with are the bottom two here. Here's a policy statement that accepts um, the instance routing instance A. And likewise, here's a statement that accepts routing instance B. So in our master routing instance, we're going to work in the routing options stanza. And we are going to do an instance import. And we are going to call or reference those um, to policies, and it's as simple as that. And there we go. You can see both have been uh, specified and things are looking good. So once again, let's just look at our routing table real quick. You can see the clean separation here. And now let's commit this and then take a look again. All of a sudden, of course, you can see that the inet.0 table in the master instance looks quite different, doesn't it? And in particular, which you should notice, is that all of the routes from INET, uh, or sorry, yeah, routing instance A are indeed now in the master table. And likewise, all the routes from routing instance B are also in that master table or master instance. So it worked. Things are looking good. So let's start to tweak things here and control what we actually share. So let's show our policy options again. And this time, let's notice the top two policies. This one does some filtering. It actually only uh, allows direct and local routes, and the second one allows only static routes. So we are going to use the instance export feature within each routing instance to control uh, the different variations here. So let's start with routing instance um, A. Oh, pardon me, routing instance A. And in the routing uh, options stanza inside that routing instance, let's do an instance export, and let's call that first routing policy there. So we're only going to accept the directs and the locals. Now let's do the same thing with our routing instance B. Running options. And in this, or, or for this case, let's instead use the other routing policy to accept only static routes for that routing instance. So let's check our work. There you go. You can see the instance export statement here and the instance export statement here. Let's show our routing table again, just so we know what we're working with. So in inet.0 right now, everything is shared, so we see everything. Let's commit our work. 
let's look at the result. And once again, immediately you should see the difference here with inet.0, and let's look at that more closely. So recall that for routing instance A, we now have that instance export statement in place that allows only the direct and local routes in the interface route. So if we look up here in the master table, now we see that only those uh, routes are shared. So that's working correctly. Down in routing instance B, we applied the instance export statement and it only allows uh, the static routes. So back up to inet.0 here in the master instance and indeed only those two static routes are now shared. The others are not shared. So everything is working well and uh, instance import and instance export are both working as we would expect here. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.